Lancelot, where is that Frenchman? Uh, was he not called? Please, sire. I have just passed his chamber and I fear he is stricken with some terrible plague. Come oh, defend us. For the love of God, speak up, Gawain. What do you mean? Sire, I saw him standing, stripped of the buff in a stone basin, scrubbing himself madly as though to wash it all away. Wash what away? Get to the point. The plague, sire. He was covered with a vile, whitish foam, like the sweaty lather of a hard-ridden horse. I dared not speak to him, but hurried here to tell you all. Perhaps my Lord Merlin knows the ailment and has some sovereign remedy. Oh, sir, Lancelot is my friend. Hold. Stand back, Lancelot. Come no nearer. Sire, I, I do not understand. What in the name of heaven? I saw you in the grips of some terrible malady. White, foamy stuff was coming out of your skin. I thought you had the plague, but... <laughs> the plague! <laughs> Your pardon, sire, but what Gawain saw was only the foam from a new substance good wizard Merlin gave me to aid in bathing and shaving. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I have there from the Orient, brought to me by a friar from Saxony. It is called soap, from the Latin sapo. If it be a plague, I hope it spreads among all the unwashed in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> what a dainty court we shall have. The ladies all like sweet little roses. The men all bright and shining like our dear Lancelot. Your Majesty, I have a rhyme. To Lancelot, the fragrant knight of Camelot. <laughs> <laughs> he meets his foes and smites them prone with nothing but his scent alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Uh, set out uh, another bowl and tankard. As uh, by now you all know, a messenger knight has arrived from King Leodogran of Camellia. I see by your faces you already know what is in my heart. Yes, I asked Leodogran for the hand of his daughter Guinevere in a marriage that would unite our kingdoms in love and brotherhood. Those of you who have seen her can understand my passion and dreams. And so I wish to receive his knight at our table round to break bread with us and to show him the full measure of our hospitality. Your Majesty, here's a messenger knight from Camellia. Sir, what's the name? Sir Tors. Sir Mors. Name is Tors. Sir, name is Tors. You may approach Sir Tors to kiss our hand and join us at our board as the honored messenger of a noble king. My kingly master ordered me not to kneel until the matter is settled. He disputes your claim to royalty, doubts that you are King Uther's son and Britain's right and law. My friend, sire! It is a mere boy in man's armor, obeying his liege lord. Lancelot is right. Let him be and give him food and drink. My master did not forbid me to eat and drink. I thank you, my lord. Here's the scroll. We will read your discourteous master's words and bear you no ill will. Now read it aloud so that all may hear. Yes, sir. Arturo Asse Nominato Regi Britannia. Oh, in English, Lancelot. Mm, for the benefit of those who have no Latin. Yes, sir. He says that... Uh, he says that after receiving his message, uh, you will undoubtedly consider the matter of going to war with him, but uh, suggests uh, that uh, rather than kill off hundreds of good men on both sides, he uh, proposes to settle both questions, your uh, right to England's throne and your request for his uh, daughter's hand in marriage, by the honored method of trial by combat. Oh, my God! Ah, let's hear him out. Ah. Uh, let your chosen champion uh, return with my messenger knight, uh, he says, accompanied only by uh, his squire and grooms. We will treat him uh, fairly and uh, match him in the lists with our own Sir Dorjak. Dorjak! A man to reckon with, sire, a champion true enough, young Dorjak. He fought valiantly against the Huns. We never met him, but all of us were anxious to try him out. Read on, Lancelot. Is this trial to be to the death or a mere unhorsing? 
to the death, sire, from his wording. Uh, Rio de Grand says, should our, uh, our own knight survive, he will send him back to you uh, with his scepter and his daughter as tokens of his fealty and devotion to our unified cause. Sire, if it please your majesty. Rise, Sir Lancelot, my champion. Charger is ready, Sir Knight. I've made sure of every strap. My thanks, Sir Tors. It is the least I can do as your official second. Have you chosen which weapon to carry on your person? The axe. A drink before we helmet you. No thanks, but uh, cool a tank it for me. It will be thirsty work in the sun. Would I be disloyal to my king to say I hope you live to drink it? God willing, we'll down it together. Take him to the mounting stand. Well, it begins. Accepted, Sir Dorjac, Knight of Cameliard, and Sir Lancelot, Knight of Camelot, will essay in a trial by combat to determine certain matters of controversy between His Gracious Majesty Leodegrand, King of Cameliard, and one Arthur, calling himself King of all Britain. The combat shall be to the death with four weapons of war, sharpened lance, Great sword, battle axe, and mace. Sir Dorjak, well, you know what we have at stake in this ordeal. Our sovereignty, as well as my beloved daughter. Spare no effort nor cunning ruse in this encounter. No man has ever unhorsed me, Your Majesty. Nor shall this Sir Lancelot. We pray it shall be so. Luck to you, sir. Perhaps I shouldn't have said that. I am loyal to my king. I have no doubt of that. Loyalty is proven more by action than by words.
of the trial by combat is resolved. Long live Arthur, King of all Britain, and his patrol, the Princess Guinevere, future Queen of all Britain. Then in uh, rapid succession we fought and defeated Cradlemont of Wales, Claudius and Clarence of Northumberland, then Lot of Orkney, Brandegoros of Latungo, Morganor and Dulfus. Oh. I'm sorry if the subject bores you, my lady. Oh, not bored, Sir Knight. Just weary of the saddle. Ah. Although I'm used to riding. Ah, you ride like a boy. My father raised me like one having no son. I've always ridden to the hunt, and for pleasure. But this long, slow journey is another matter. There's a clear pool, not very deep, where we will make our camp. Do you swim like a boy as well? Aye, <laughs> but in the water I may look less like one. Vivian, fetch me a dry cloth. I shall be cold when I come out. I have one here, my lady. Oh, that won't be enough. Another such. And my cloak. Magic is that? Sir Merlin's magic, my lady. He calls it soap. Very cleansing and soothing to the skin. Slick as an eel. Mm. Use it freely to wash all your sins away. It is a joy indeed. It makes one feel as... It is not some magic. Some kind of charm or witchcraft. We've heard such tales of this, Merlin. It is a love filter, my lady. It will awaken the passion of your loved one. Uh, when mixed with a strong dose of kisses and embraces and briskly stirred together. You're making mock of me. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I yield me. Hey, Nothing. I will give you no quarter. Sanctuary, sanctuary. Sanctuary, I see no cloister. And what? certainly no nuns. Would you dare lay hands on your queen? No queen yet. <laughs> Only a pretty brat who needs a ducking! Mercy! <laughs> Here, my lady. I hope you've managed to keep warm. You have arrived in time for the rescue, Lady Vivian. I was about to give your lady a second baptism. I will uh, leave this with you. This uh, love filter. Good, but not good enough. Remains to be seen. A gold piece? Gold piece. <laughs> Lords and ladies, tis good news. Sir Lancelot has vanquished Sir Darjak and is but a day's journey behind with the Princess Guinevere. I must away to the king with the news. The king! Others rejoice, Griselda, not I. For my long cherished hope of being my father's heir will perish if this young bride bears him a child. Then I shall be merely an illegitimate son. And my claim to the throne will vanish like a dream. Unless I strike like an arrow, swift and deadly. And to the mark. Stay behind me. 
doors bring up our sheath swiftly. King of all Britain, I shall bring order and law to our land. But the poor child, why she must have been in mortal terror. A mere child to be in the midst of such carnage. In, in terror, yes, sire, but helpless, no. She cut one villain down herself, as good and true a stroke as I have ever seen. Did she? Did she? <laughs> the lass has spirit then to be a queen and the mother of kings. Ah, but how long can it take a woman to change her gown? Doubtless she wishes to be at her best when you first see her, sire. Bathed and refreshed and fragrant. You're right. I must not be so impatient. <laughs> Laugh if you will. But I'm all a quiver. <laughs> My palms are wet. My heart pounds. <laughs> it might help, sire, to remember that you are the bridegroom, not the bride. <laughs> You're right, Lancelot. I must not be so maidenly. <laughs> Tell me, my good friend Lancelot, did she speak of me on the journey hither and of the marriage? Is she content to be my bride? Sire, there's nothing she wishes more than to be your queen. She said that? No soft words, Lancelot, the truth now. No, sire, the truth in almost those very words. Good, good. A good beginning then. She's beautiful, is she not, Lancelot? Exceedingly, as I recall. Your memory serves you well, sire. I want to make her happy. I want to make her happy. And you will make her happy, sire. What maid would not leap to be in her place? She will know, as I do, as do all your familiars. No kinglier man, no manlier king lives on this earth. How would she not be happy? I thank you. My dear, good, and true friend. And thanks again for this happiness which you have won for me. Nay, sire, any one of your knights... Ah, uh, but would they have won? Ah, where is the wench? How much of a woman is there to bathe and gown and cover with scent? Why, an army could prepare for battle in half the time. Must I sit here? I think I hear her coming with Merlin. <laughs> Your 
Majesty, the Princess Guinevere of Camellia. Welcome to Camelot. My dear Guinevere. to take your next position. You know what it is? Yes, sir. That's good. But I don't. Your Majesty, all is in readiness. So am I. I have been for a week. Every bridegroom for his week. Now, Your Majesty, if you proceed to the altar. Please take Sir Lancelot's arm and proceed to the altar at the next trumpet call. Tankard of mead with me. 
My head is going round. I've had two already. Two already? What a drinking man you are. Before the evening is out, you must have at least two more. Everyone loves everyone tonight, and everyone is very happy. Ah, Lancelot, you know our new friends and late adversaries, Ulfus and Brandagoras. Ah, uh, yes. Ulfus here still wears the scars you gave him at Landagor. I remember. The wounds heal very nicely. Too bad. Better for you next time. Insolent French dog. Patience, friends, as he's a king's right arm. Arthur trusts him with his life and with his wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> kill them, kill them, kill them, ugly flies. Swiftly, Edric, some meat before it is all gone. Unless Sir Lamorak has finished it already. Uh. <laughs> Odds, face Lancelot. I've just planked goblets with a dozen knights whose throats I saw to cut a year ago. And several that still need slitting. Edric, a foul. A foul, I said. A beautiful and touching celebration. I'm moved to rhyme of it. Good King Arthur, late in life, took himself a youthful wife. A baby boy is the rule, they say, when November weds with May. A royal prince to claim the rule, while other hopefuls play the fool. <laughs> Only a fool would take you for one, my lord. Have I your devotion? Yes. Oh, yes, as no man ever before. You and I can go far if we guide our destinies. Yes. Guide them with a strong hand. I do not believe that my fate has been altered by, by my father's autumn passion. And I will bend fate. Break it if need be, but I will not allow that which is mine, which has been the constant goal of my life, to be snatched from my grasp. Boom, sire, nothing more. Quick, Lancelot, take her to her chambers. Merlin, come with me. Let nobody be disturbed. Her Majesty has merely swooned, as what may might not on such a day. Let the merriment continue, and let me forget now that I am a king, and remember only that I am a bridegroom. Dear 
husband. Why can't I? I've ridden to the hounds since a little girl. In Camellia, many ladies of the court joined the hunt. It is not our custom, my sweet. Oh. The chase is wild and rough. I wouldn't think of letting you endanger one golden hair. I've come to love it so well. Oh, but I take no pleasure sitting here all day gossiping with my ladies. I will see you amused. Uh, take the hounds below. What have you in mind, my Arthur? Well, if the chatter of your ladies bores you, we will get nice enough to tell you tall tales of adventuring. Lancelot! Sire? I have need of you here. At once, sire. I don't know what the world is coming to when pert young wives venture argument with their husbands. But in you I like it, provided you always give in. You do love me, a little. Oh, yes, my liege. You're kind, gentle, and all that a woman may honor and respect. Yes, I love you, with all I know of love. More oh, I could not ask. You will have a care for yourself during the chase. So careful, I shall probably never see this day. <laughs> From now on, in forest, hunt or field of battle, I shall be known as Arthur, King of Cowards. <laughs> oh, I have so much to come back to. Oh, a likely story, but pleasant to the ear. <laughs> ah, Lancelot, you are captain of the watch today, so watch over my lady's entertainment as well. Anything our heart desires, providing there's no danger. Oh, come now, no parting. Kiss me goodbye. We'll go riding tomorrow, hawking maybe. But no mad gallops through thicket and forest. That's for men. Goodbye, my love. Have a good day. Goodbye, my liege. I want you to know, Sir Lancelot, that as your queen, I not only look upon you as a loyal subject, but also as a friend. You do me great honor. Besides, you saved my life. Therefore, it pains me that you've been avoiding my presence these past weeks. Oh, it is not that. Uh, it is only uh, I have my many duties as you have yours. Uh, that is the sum of it. Oh, good. Well, now that my mind is at rest, I feel free to... Wait a As I was saying, I'll feel free to seek you out, if need be. my ladies any longer. Oh, gossip, gossip, gossip. I'll sit here and arrange my flowers. I hope uh, you will forgive my presence here in your garden, but uh, His Majesty always permitted me its use. You have my permission as well. Thank you, Your Majesty. Pay me no heed at all. Go on with your reading of that ponderous scroll. Pretend I'm as far away as your thoughts. What is it you read with such devotion? The Odes of Horace, Your Majesty. An early Roman with a, a comforting philosophy. Indeed? What does he teach? To be content with what one has and uh, not to strive for the unattainable. Very comforting. Well, I must... <laughs> Just one more question and I'll not bother you further. But why must all writings be in Latin or Greek? Why can't they be in our own British language? 
Well, uh, it is a mongrel speech, my lady, made up of many tongues. Uh, there are no uh, symbols by which it could be written. Oh, it is a pity. I should like to be able to write simple messages to my dear Arthur, such as, I love you. How will you write that in Latin? It is uh, very simple. I, uh, I show you here on the sand. I love is uh, one little word, amor, uh, and uh, the or you is te. There it is. I love you. Lancelot. All of you speak your minds. As you say, sire, we cannot raise an army of uh, sufficient might in time. And Ulfus and Brandegoris well know it. I counsel, therefore, that your majesty let me depart with what uh, force can be spared to delay the enemy at once. Whilst you, sire, bring to your standard here the full strength of your allies. Oh, say you, Lancelot. Your counsel leaves me here whilst you do battle. I am no king to sit on a throne and let my knights do my fighting. Sire, your prowess in battle has been sung too often to need defending, as well as your courage. But it is only you, our sovereign lord on this isle, who can command the allegiance and instant obedience of our several allies. I cannot deny, however unwillingly, 
for the worth of your argument. And of your counsel, Lancelot. Choose those you will have at your side in this perilous undertaking. Leave with me half our ready force, so that if need arise, we here will not be defenseless. Edric, Ryan, take Sir Cedric to my chambers. Down with Merlin. We will have further parley, Lancelot, before you depart. Thank you, sir. I could not let you leave without one kiss. Do you love me? Yes, my golden hair. God help me, I love you. I swear you'll return to me. Otherwise, I will die. I will return. And only to you. I wasn't sleepy. I thought I might as well sit here as lie on the ground. Aye. This unbroken sod does not make a feather bed, does it? I had but little sleep myself. I, uh, I'm always restless before a battle. Are you? It is my way, too. I, I know not why. It is not that I'm afraid. Afraid? You? Ha! I would not be here today were it not for your prowess in that uh, ambush. I hope you will stay at my side today. I thank you, Sir Lancelot. I would not tell this to anyone else, but that ambush was my first battle. Truly? The first time I ever killed a man. I have never been in a battle such as we will face. Oh, it will be no different, merely longer. The odds will give us more work to do. Is this your only armor, Tors? Where is what you wore to Camelot? That was borrowed. This is all I have. I have a spare suit of armor and my light blue tabard with the pack horses. Go kick the lad, put it on. Oh, nay, Sir Lancelot, I could not. Must I command you, Sir Tors? You will acquit yourself well, I have no doubt, and the glory will be mine. I thank you, Sir Lancelot. I hope I will be worthy. <laughs> You are men, it is you! And if it is, who will deny me? 
take the women if you must, but keep your men from the wine. The women! Gather them by the tent. The women to the center! By the tent! No men prisoners! They have water on three sides. We shall put fire on the fourth.
Uh, you've had your baptism. We killed enough today to last us a lifetime. It's a pity, however. Fulpris and Brandigoras has skipped us. They're vanquished. The whole army destroyed. Lancelot, you've done it. We've done it, lad. All of us together. <laughs> Lot. Is that not his light blue tablet on the litter those men carry? It seems so. It is hard to tell at this distance. A body on the litter. This is Tabard. I pray it not be Lancelot. I'm a blunt man. I've no words or wits to fence with. You have words I... enough today. Get to the point. I came here to escape words and sly looks. Or to meet with softer words and gentler looks. Is that to the point? Aye. I have points and blades enough waiting for me now without adding yours to the list. Mine wait only for your enemies. No matter who or what they may be. I shouldn't have doubted you even for that moment. I, I have lost track lately of friendship. And a few other little things like duty, loyalty, honor. I know not what to do. Did you ever expect to see me so enmeshed in a web of white and gold silk? How many lances have I shattered for a woman's favor I cannot count? And ridden away afterward, 
old in heart and body. And now, I am lost, I am lost. Right away again, lad, while there's still time. Let's take horse tonight for your castle, Joyous Guard. From there, we can ship to Brittany. Word has come that the Huns have invaded France. There should be much adventure and honorable profit there. Odds fish, I feel a boy again at the thought. I'm your man. I'm captain of the watch tonight. Nothing will be stirred up if we ride out at dawn, after my watch, for a day or two at Joyous Guard. Hmm? But not to tell you, Frenchman. Stand your watch tonight, and nowhere else. Remember, who knows, but Mordred may hope to make this night his night of all nights, if I make my thoughts clear. Aye, as clear as the blow of your mace. Then it's agreed. <laughs> I can feel my arms around that fat girl now. That is as far as I could reach. Hey, what was her name again? Yvette? Uh, no, no, uh, Toinette. No. Uh, no matter, it'll come back before that ship reaches Brittany. <laughs> what ship is that, gentlemen? Ship, Your Majesty? Let it go, Lamorak. There's no use lying. I'll explain matters to Her Majesty. I'm surprised, Sir Launcelot. No knight would lie to his queen. You may leave us, Sir Lamorak. Your Majesty. When do you sail for Brittany, Sir Light of Love? Whatever you heard, whatever I must do, you know what is in my heart. In what heart? I should have known better than to trust a Frenchman. That's my golden hair. Strike right and left if what displeases you. This is how I love you best. You lie. You never loved me. You took my love of a saddled horse standing by and a ship for Brittany. If I stay and we continue, and I could not be near you without loving you, it would end in death for both of us. I never thought to see you afraid. There are some things all men feel, and one of them is being burned at the stake before a gaping crowd of shopkeepers. And does not the same fire wait for me if we are caught? Oh, you speak like a child. You feel but do not think. It is better than a man who thinks but does not feel. To leave me without a word. As if I were some innkeeper's daughter, without even a thank you or farewell. You know I never would have ridden away without one last moment with you. Oh, only a moment. I should have thought if it's to be our last night, that you'd be more generous with your love. Now listen to me. Lamorak is not the only one who knows. It is the gossip of the court. And Mordred will see to it that it reaches Arthur's ears. And do not mistake your Arthur. He will uphold the law, whatever it costs him, or you. Then take me with you to France, or anywhere. Do you think they would give us peace? The Queen of Britain and a traitorous knight, there would be no haven for us anywhere. I see them. Tis farewell. And nothing will sway you. Will you come to me tonight? At least that? I cannot bear it this way. To your own room? It is a deadly chance. Not even Modred would dare put spies on my door. I'll wait for you. After your watch is over. Whatever the hour. Oh, Lancelot, swear you'll come to me tonight. I would not place you in such jeopardy. No, my sweet love. This must be our farewell. Very well. I've done with crawling on my knees to you. Let it be farewell, forever. But I'll wait for you tonight. Then my fork and swooped and seized the quail from under the very wings of Modred's beloved Griselda. <laughs> it was laughable to see the fury in Modred's face. And I made him pay the gold pieces that he wagered me. Arthur, my dear, come, tis late. Drink your wine and then to bed with you. Shall I add a few drops of Merlin's sleeping draught? Aye, I, I double the dose. Tonight I will sleep like the dead. 
with no dreams. Oh, what you need is a change of scene, some new action, a nice little war, perhaps. Can't you stir up a pretty little war of sorts? None that I would relish facing. Come now, drink your medicine like the man you really are. It's not so bitter as you make it out. Is it not? Then look at me and tell me if you can that there's a medicine for the pain in my heart. I tell you this, as I hope for God's mercy, you may sleep sound tonight, knowing that tomorrow's sun will find gone all cause of your unhappiness. Is that enough? Aye. For that, I'll drain the cup and sleep until I wake with your arms around me. Is that proof? have your man's world, your tournaments, your wars, your women. Oh. Yes, you will desire a woman here or there and have her. But I, I have no life without you. I can desire only you. I have nothing. Nothing. I'll die. No, you will not. Do not forget. There's hope in the future. You will live for it and survive, for I will love you always, as I do now. Farewell, my love, my only love.
force the peak, the trap is sprung. Speak up, men. Is it news of Lancelot? Aye, Your Majesty. He and Lamarack made good their escape to Joyce Guard. Of the knights and men we sent in pursuit, only half have returned. The others have gone over to Lancelot's side. So it begins again. Dagonet's little war over white flesh and golden hair. And what of Dagonet? Where is he? We have no word of him, sire. Not since he was seen weeping at the Queen's side when she was being carried to Camelot Prison. And uh, in the town, many are barring their doors, men darkening their windows. Others are gathering to watch the burning. You two go in. Tears for the faithless. Your pardon, sire. My sorrow is for my brother Gareth. In your own troubled state, I did not wish to impose my grief on you. What happened? He was carrying no arms because it was Lancelot. He merely sought to hold him on the stairs as you had ordered. But Lancelot killed him. This is as unlike the Lancelot I knew as all the rest of this. Lancelot was hard pressed. He struck blindly right to left. He drove through us. I have doubts he even knew that he'd fell, Gareth. In all fairness, go away. Even so, Gareth's blood is on his head. Sire, I had two loyalties. Now I have but one. The other is turned into a hate as keen as your own. Aye, lad, I know. It seems that love and hate are so close akin. Only the sharpest sword can separate one from the other. Sire, let me lay siege to Joyous Guard before Lancelot escapes to France. Peace, lad. Lancelot can wait. So it begins. The law says fire. I made the law. Were I to break it for such a cause as this, I'd be king no longer. Am I not right, Merlin? Where lies my duty? 
this united Britain that we have built at such a cost, to hold it in peace as long as I may, or to my heart. You know how often I urged you not to take Guinevere in marriage. It was a love that could never be. Now, whether forgiveness would have seemed weakness, how the life of one erring girl should weigh against the peace of the state, that I cannot answer. All I find in my tired brain and slowing heart is the hope for a better world than this, where there will be no wars, big or little. At any rate, it's too late for a change of heart, Arthur. Aye. So it is. Fire. God in heaven. A face and hands. A white body. A hair of gold so soft and alive. God! What have I done? What can I do? reinforcements on your way. No, but it is said in Camelot that Mark of Cornwall is sending catapults and battering rams. Much good battering rams would do. The place is impregnable by land. We'll take it at night from the water side when our boats are ready. It'll take months. Come forth! Lancelot, I see you! 
Again, I challenge you to personal combat with any weapons of your choice. Come forth, the coward, if you have any manhood left. Murderer! False knight! I see you dead with a sword in your throat. Come forth, you shall not escape. Coward! Is that Gawain shouting his challenge again? Every day, every day. I always had a fondness for Gawain. But these days, I could gladly clout him with my mace. Arthur, uh -huh. well, he had some right in his sight. But Gawain, he knows how well you loved him and Gareth. He must know in his heart you never meant to slay him. And the dark and the heat of battle. Be quiet! Must your tongue keep pace with your appetite? Well, I'm sorry, lad, if I, I said... I do not need your apologies. No, you lame attempts to cheer me. Keep your counsel, I'll keep mine. And do not follow me everywhere I go. Let me be. Let me be. He's turned coward as well as traitor and assassin. Lance, not coward. I say coward, damn his black soul! Oh, Wayne. Pardon, sir. I never knew Lancelot to refuse a challenge. I too have challenged Lancelot, week after week, to make this a personal matter rather than one for all this bloodletting. He refuses to fight either of us. Yet I cannot believe it, cowardice. It is very simple, sir. It is true, Gawain. Lancelot loves you both too well to raise sword or axe against you. It seems an odd distinction. His archers pour arrows on us and boiling oil from the walls. It's an odd show of love and loyalty. You and I must see the new entrenchments, Gawain, and the progress of the boats. Your leave, sir. Come on, then. Close the tent, Dagonet. There's a cold wind. Blood of a lad from Camilliard. Haven't you gone through hell enough without taking on this role of angel of mercy? A lad from home, Dickon, a bowman. He, he was a page boy at, at my father's court. He told me he had loved me all his few years. I know the boy. How is he now? His little love story is over. He died with his head in my lap. He's not the first nor the last who will die. Go and change that gown. You look like a nun. I might as well be one, as far as you're concerned. Is our little love story over, too? Turn to stony indifference? Difference? God in heaven, Green! You've scarcely spent an hour alone with me. I live in a dungeon of silence and evasion. Meanwhile, lads like Dick and I for us, while you brood on knightly honor and refuse to take the one way to our freedom. And killing Gawain and Arthur would mean our freedom? Freedom? Is there a land so distant that I can find freedom from the thoughts which whirl night and day in my heart and brain? I love you, Gwyn, but I wrong them already more than I can bear. Do not, I beg you, I beg you, do not ask me for further dishonor. What dishonor would lie in accepting their challenges, meeting them fairly, man to man? You'd be risking as much as they? Toward Gawain, all he knows, and half the good man is he has never could hold his own against me. It would be plain assassination, I cannot. They'll have no mercy on you, or me, if they starve us out. If that is all we're waiting for... I will not raise sword against Arthur. Mark my words, I will not raise sword against Arthur if it means my life. And if it means mine. If you loved me, you'd take the one way out and win a new chance for us. It's in your hands. You can give us life and happiness with one blow of sword or axe. Well, then. Enough. Perhaps you're right. And there is no other way. I will end this folly. When? Tomorrow when Gawain comes, I'll meet him. And then Arthur. I'll send him a challenge which he cannot refuse. You'll let nothing stop you. 
not even the fires of hell. Now run and change. Love. Oh, I have no fear for you. No man can stand against you. If you want your life to win, take back your insults. And admit that you know in your heart, I never meant to kill Gareth. Say it and go free! Kill me as you did my brother. Kill me, murderer! False knight! Traitor! Take your life, Gawain, despite all. I would not kill you any more than Gareth, whom I loved. Leave and take back to your king this message. This is the message, sire. To Arthur, king of all Britain. Many men have been killed and more to come when only one is guilty. Give your word that there will be no reprisals, that all others in this keep will go unscathed to freedom. All others. And I will surrender myself to any fate that you would vent upon me. Fair sire, he has signed his own death warrant. He bargains for her, sire, when soon we shall have all. Is Guinevere guiltless and the others that turn traitor to their king? Treason cannot go unpunished, but perhaps if they would swear a new allegiance. Your pardon, sire. But can anyone here speak the name of Lancelot, no matter how bitterly? Without calling to mind the many deeds of friendship and of valor, silence all of you. You, who are wisest in counsel, have said naught. You are the king, sir. That is my counsel. Aye. And with the crown and scepter, also the welfare of the kingdom was placed in my hands. You all think and feel like men. I must act with the mind and the heart of a king. Good evening, dear Merlin. I'm so glad to see you. And I to see you again, Your Majesty. No Majesty, no queen at all. I hope just a woman in love. Now, tell me the plan of battle. Here, my champion. Let me sit adoringly at your feet. Please sit, dear Merlin. When does it take place? If it please your ma my lady, there is nothing in this matter about a combat. No combat? You mean this great king of yours, this, no offense, dear Merlin, but this dealer in roasted women in the marketplace, he refuses the challenge. My lady, there was no challenge to fight. The king... Uh... No challenge? Lancelot's offer to the king was the surrender of his person for any torment or death, so long as you and all here with you were freed. No, Lancelot, you didn't. No, my love, he shan't have you. Quietly, quietly, my beloved. The king is merciful. He has altered my conditions. There is to be an end of dying for a while, for you and me and all concerned. Good Merlin, would you leave us? Go on. I am banished to France. And you are to be given safe escort to the convent in Glastonbury. That's my love. Mull it over behind those big eyes and you'll see it's our one hope for a true chance of happiness. I see nothing but nuts and black and white. And prayers, fastings and bells. I heard enough bells that morning. Look in my golden hair. There is nothing in the king's offer that says you must take a nun's vows. And our parting may not be for long. The world Arthur knows is dying, and Bordred will bring it crashing down around his ears. I will be out of it in Brittany, and you will be safe in sanctuary, safe from Mordred or anyone else, until I come for you. A widow, and not one of my making. <laughs> then we have only a few days. We must be grateful for that. 
When do I go? In the morning. In the morning? It is part of the bargain. I am to stay here and take ship for Brittany in three days. <gasps> Lamorai goes with me. <laughs> Arthur will receive you in all honor. Merlin will ride with you. I will not ride. I shall walk. And take nothing of my happiness with me but what I wear. You will be your own brave self and show them how real queen faces defeat. I will. I will. But hold me close tonight. This whole short night. But there's something picking at my heart. And saying, this is the end of love. is all right indoors. But when does it find out that summer's come again? Has it? Not while you keep winter in your heart. There are no ships in sight. There should be tidings from Britain in the inns along the harbor. Come along. Bonjour, messieurs. Bonjour, madame. Quelque chose à manger et du vin, s'il vous plaît. Mais tout de suite. Malheureusement, c'est trop tôt pour la nourriture chaude, mais j'ai de la viande froide. Ça ne fait rien. Et moi, est-ce qu'il y a quelques nouvelles d'Angleterre Oh, ça depuis un mois, depuis le dernier bateau. It's too early for uh, hot food, but you bring some cold meat and wine, and uh, there is no news from Britain. She runs to my taste, this innkeeper. Oh, there's times when I wish I knew a little more of this French tongue of yours. You know enough for what's on your mind. Yeah, voila. I go fetch wine. I think she needs a little help. to see you bury it in Mildred's heart. I know you never meant to kill my brother. What brings you here, my friend? You. I've ridden from Bintu in looking for you for the last month. I saw your steed outside and Lamorak's. Aye. Lamorak is trying his French on our box of innkeeper. Tell me, what news of Britain? Arthur's dead by Mildred's hand. Then it's happened, as I thought it would. And he's gone, my king, my friend, whom I betrayed but never ceased to love. Merlin's passed on, old Sir Kay, and the Lady Vivian. She took poison when Mordred had no more use for her. Again. You need it at home. 
to put down Mordred. That's why I've come. Nay, I have finished with killing. I am for Glastonbury and my Guinevere. Not when I tell you what's happened to Glastonbury. No, not that bad, but bad enough. Mordred and his men broke into the Queen's sanctuary. The Queen and some of the sisters escaped to Wales. And Mordred in his fury killed the rest and burnt the nunnery. I was wrong, Gawain. I have not finished with killing. Are you not going to leave me behind? Die in this stinking Brittany of yours? I knew the day when I would have made you run a couple of courses with lances for insulting my native land. Have no fear. I'll have you at Mordred's death if Lamorak has to carry you. My word! <laughs>
I'm the Mother Superior. I know the mission on which you have come. Please bear in mind your surroundings and that all visitors must leave when the Vespers bell rings. What is this habit you are wearing? I am a novice. Thank God that I'm in time. Did you think I would not come? I have a horse for you outside and clothing. Why do you not look at me? What do I see in your eyes? Pity? Pity for the fear which suddenly springs into mine. If you can stand there, within reach of my arms, your lips an instant away from mine, and not rush into my embrace. Lancelot, you must not speak so to me. I will shortly take my vows to become a nun of this order. No, no. I pray for your understanding so that you will not think so harshly of me or leave in too great pain. I would do any penance rather than cause you to suffer. No, I will not believe that when they cut off your golden hair, your love for me was shorn away as well. Oh, Gwyn, a life together awaits us. Everything we once hoped for, the warmth of our love, children, the rest of our lives to share. It was for this we went through so much hell. What's happened to you? It would be hard to tell all that has happened to me in the year past. Much of it I do not understand myself. When first I was at the convent at Glastonbury, I prayed for the earthly things I had lost all you now spoke of. Then my prayers changed. I know not how or why, and I prayed for other things, for the peace of your soul and mine, and for God's forgiveness, and for his love. And now I know that the light which the church speaks of, which many men seek all their lives, I have seen brightly shining, and I will follow that light until I die and beyond. You too will find that light if you try, in your own way, in God's good time. Your gentleness is harder than any steel. I have no weapons against such armor. Is there no way through for me to reach your love? The Vespers bell. I've been told that I must leave forever. Where? To what? My atonement? The account is of long standing, it is true, and payment overdue. Perhaps that is what this all means. And I must find strength as you have. And I will pray. I know not what else to do. I shall pray for you each day and every night of my life. Farewell. My golden hair. <laughs> <laughs> 